Hi, I am Rahul Kumar. I am the manager of the Assembly Lab. So, um, since we worked on a lot of different projects, Arduino has helped us out a lot in these kind of fields. Um, um, in, a, in a kind of way, it's really good to prototype, do a simpler version, a bare bone structure, uh, a bare bone version of the project that we wanted to do, uh, similar to what we we did with the 3D POV. Uh, we've done a uh, we've done a 2D POV for a workshop a few a few years ago, and that, that kind of brought uh, the 3D POV into fruition. Um, our original idea of the 2D POV consisted of the same layout. So instead of having uh, multiple LED strips, we had a single strip. We had a Hall effect sensor with a magnet attached. Um, which would refresh the uh, LEDs as, as it hits that particular point. We had an Arduino running the uh, LEDs, so it would blink at a specific point, creating the illusion of an image showing up. And we had a DC motor set up initially to, um, a, a, to act as a rotating point. Uh, for the updated version and the one that we decided to go for for the project, we, uh, uh, we, we saw a lot of different uh, approaches online regarding this and we saw quite a few designs which involved a, uh, a layered 3D kind of approach and we wanted to test out how that would look in this way. So what, uh, what we did different to what traditionally was done with the 3D POV that was online was we set up the strips on two different sides instead of having on one side. That way the illusion of the strips kind of is divided and it's easier to code for it. Um, we set up the Hall effect sensor similar to how we did in our original um, uh, workshop. Um, and the, uh, for the, uh, the rotating aspect of it, we added a uh, brushless gear motor. Uh, the brushless gear motor, it required a bit of power, so we had to get an external power supply. So the external power supply supplies enough uh, enough uh, voltage, enough current, so that the mo uh, the motor can move in a certain way. Also, we have a potentiometer set up so that we can adjust the speed of the POV. So we could see different how different effects are formed, how these effects work, how these effects regulate, and we also uh, we also coded different. Uh, uh, modes for it as well. So uh, for now, we hard coded a lot of the modes, but we are also looking into ways of uh, making a custom software to import images onto the uh, POV display. Uh, also, the the uh, exterior of the display is made of acrylic. We also wanted to add a suspended uh, block so that we have a bit of height. There is a 3D printed part that holds uh, the brushless motor and there is a attachment on top which ensures that the 3D POV stays put because there is a lot of uh, friction as the motor moves. It is just to ensure that everything stays in place and uh, there isn't a lot of noise. Okay, when I first met people at the assembly and we had to do something for Jitex, I thought that was a good idea to make another version of my color theremin, that is this device that is basically an Arduino Uno with a couple of sensors that sense how much my head is distant from the plane. And so what happens with this very simple project is that I can control the light and intensity and uh, kind of play the same screen. So if I use both my hands, I can do some nice pattern. But the scope of this design is to show people that you can make amazing, kind of amazing uh, light shows with very simple technology that is basically Arduino Uno, two distant sensors, and a bunch of LEDs. Very simple, uh, just I would say 550 lines of code but is again the idea behind this project that has proved to be very effective. So if you want to enjoy some nice LED show, pick up an Arduino, pick up some smart LEDs and play with sensors like temperature, like distance, like sound, because it's always going to be fun. This is what I did and I think that you can do that as well.
Hey everyone, my name is Chandni Vaya. So back in 2017, I worked with a few of my colleagues uh, to build a CNC plotter for one of the external clients of the assembly. Uh, the whole idea of uh, the project was to uh, bring street art and technology together. So what they wanted to do is that they wanted to build an art with, for which half of the art would be built by uh, artists, and, but the other half would be built by the technology, by a technology itself. And for this, we built it using Arduino, uh, which was powered by a software called Polargraph. And it was also powered by Twitter. So how all of this came together is that um, we wanted to draw the art uh, using the polar graph software so that what would we do is we take a picture, we map the coordinates of the picture based on X and Y axis on a canvas and the polar graph software will use these coordinates and send it to Arduino and the Arduino, which will be acting as a microcontroller for the whole project, will be controlling two servo motors that has the that has the pen connected to the servo motors and will be basically moving the pen according to the coordinates that it's rece uh, receiving from the Polar Graph software. And as I said, all of this was powered by Twitter. So the way that the clients wanted to do it is that they had their own hashtag. So to get more people engaging or more people engaged with the whole project, the way that it worked is that the more hashtags the client received, the faster the polar graph would move the pen around. And the way that we uh, did this was using the Twitter API where we can actually um, use the REST API to count how many hashtags we are receiving in real time. So we count the hashtags and then we send that uh, data to Arduino too. And then the Arduino basically combines that data with the coordinates that it's receiving from Polar Graph to check, should I draw right now or should I just stop for a while? This was all great. Um, it was a great combination of hardware and software. So from the hardware side, as I said, we had to take care of the servo motors as well as the servo motor that was controlling the pen. So we had to make sure that the pen wasn't always touching the canvas. While it's moving from one coordinate to another coordinate, we had to make sure that the pen is lifted properly and there are no mistakes there. One of the other challenges that we faced was that um, so the Twitter thing, the Twitter API was all done in its own software written in Python. There was a Polar Graph software written in Java and then there was Arduino. That was one of the challenges that we faced. And to resolve that issue, again, uh, Twitter API uh, had a lot of troubleshooting uh, steps that we had to take to make sure nothing goes wrong from that side. Uh, for the communication between Arduino and Polar Graph, um, we basically had the Polar Graph machine or the Polar Graph software acting as a server and the Arduino acting as a client. And if something failed, the Arduino will immediately try and connect to the Polar Graph again and it would just stop drawing for a while and not receive the coordinates. And on the Polar Graph side, we'll stop sending the coordinates. And as soon as we know that the connection is stable again, we'll start sending the coordinates. That was again from the software side. From the hardware side too, we had a lot of uh, challenges. For example, whether we should go for two servers or whether we should go for four server motors because four server motors will give us more accuracy while controlling the pen, but it would take more time to actually test it out. And Honestly, I think the time limit was one of the biggest challenges we had. I think we had around a week to make sure that everything was working fine. So we went ahead with two server motors. We took that risk, but it honestly, at the end, it all worked out pretty well. So the great, great th thing about the whole project was that, uh, was again Arduino because it allowed us to control each and everything about the hardware. Uh, and it doubled up the hardware uh, processing power without any larger costs. And again, like Arduino had a lot of documentation online. So actually going into the library itself and making the changes wasn't as hard as, as long as you know C++ and C, it's pretty easy to control Arduino the way it works to go into the library and make changes. And libraries were easily accessible. It was all on GitHub with proper readme and everything. So we didn't have any issues from the Arduino side. So that was pretty great.